Okay, so next, we are gonna have our friends from Telefon Telefonica join us. Um, they have been automating and having fun, which I think is the best combination. So they're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about what they've been up to, talk about what's new with NSO for them. So guys, take it away. Thank you. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Good? Anyone knows Telefonica? <laughs> nice. Then I go back. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Well, uh, I'm glad to be here with you guys uh, to share some of our updates. Um, we are here, David and I, representing our team, which is in Madrid. Actually, where is my camera? I think this one. Hello, Evolution team. They are looking the YouTube uh, online right now. So uh, since they are part of us and we are very proud of our team, I want to say hello. And I want to start this presentation actually uh, talking about them. So there we have the first picture from the team. Six, seven years ago, you can see David in the center. He managed somehow to look exactly the same. I don't know how, you can ask him later. But well, this is where our journey started and this is another old picture in the office in Madrid. We like to go there once per week at least and share time, uh, lunch, go to some beers because not only coding in life, uh, that's uh, advice for you guys. And well, you can see in the background the four towers. It's a very big place in Madrid. I recommend you to visit. And well, here EVO stands for Evolution, which is the name of our team. And we started six, seven years ago in Telefonica with one goal, which was uh, for the operations team, uh, start evolving the way the processes were going there, which you know as Jan said tomorrow, uh, yesterday, the states zero and one for automation, that was the, the, the starting point. And the, the goal for us is to evolve this, and you will see in the next slides how are we going. It's a surprise, but um, it's good. We're not bad. So uh, this is the last one. From this year or late, uh, last, last year, David is getting a reward as young talent. I told you, young talent yet. Don't let his, his face fool you, by the way. Um, but yeah, this is the old, the, the newer picture of the team. Uh, we're missing some people because we're 15, but uh, well, I hope now you feel the team, you can sense and have an idea of our team. We are young people, we uh, like to do job, good job, but fun, have fun and, and stuff. So I think this is very important to, to, uh, to work with people like that, okay? Then, now you know the team. So let's go for the, uh, the agenda. First, I'm gonna talk about TGS, Telefonica Global Solutions Context, about uh, how are we here in, in this automation uh, stand, and some numbers about the company and stuff. Later, I'll, we, I'll be talking about uh, our relationship with NSO and some history from the beginning and challenges we are facing right now. And finally, David, is going to to have some fun with you with the exciting uh, testing topic. I I assure you, you will have fun with him. So, let's go with TGS context. Well, actually, this is our network. Exactly, this how this is how it looks. It's a picture from. Kibana, I don't know if you know Kibana, Elasticsearch and stuff, but we use it to collect some data and, and this is how it looks. The, the dots are point of presence in the network and the links 
and the size of the link and the color of the link uh, marks how big our and occupied is every connection between between us. So some some numbers and stuff. We are tier one IP network, which means uh, it's the highest. Uh, um, yeah, the, the highest attire or classification from ISPs. Um, we have presence in 28 countries. We move 24 terabytes of second per data. Uh, well, all that stuff. But the interesting thing, we are having more than 80,000 kilometers of fiber. Do you know? what you can do with all that fiber? Well, you can have this network, but you also can wrap Earth with fiber if you want. I say that to an AI uh, generator, and this is what it uh, draws. I think it looks pretty good for me, but I prefer uh, doing this network, actually. Um, also, services we provide, internet transit, VPN, satellite, because we are not only on cables, roaming, and, and that stuff, and configuration. This is most the key here about configuration. We do a lot of commits in the network per year and per day. And uh, seven years ago, it was manual like copy-paste and that stuff, we are intended to, to automate this part. And we are having around 70% of the commits right now, more than that uh, number, uh, with NSO right now. So I think it's a good number, 70%. Yeah. We aim to go uh, to the 100, but uh, well, it's kind of difficult, and we want to improve many areas uh, between. So, well, this is the configuration. And about monitoring, uh, this is also a very big and important part of our daily work. We try to collect every everything from devices, from our tools, from NSO, and this allows us to perform some interesting things in network. For example, in base of devices logs, we can uh, fix some issue. Before uh, something breaks, we detect the, this log, this message, and we perform automatic reparation on, on the network. And that's nice. And that's because of monitoring and collecting data. So we're good there. I recommend you to do this stuff. It's interesting. And well, now I'm going to talk about our relationship with NSO. Um, basically, from we start, from where we start, and the challenges we're facing uh, right now. So, context. Initial challenge, as I told you before, we started in 2017. Uh, we were everything. Uh, network engineers and junior developers. We were looking for ways to automate and enhance the manual processes of the company. The main target was automate configurations, as I told you, but not only configurations, but every manual process in the network. And uh, the model we choose is the do-it-yourself. So uh, this requires a big effort. You need to grow and, and learn a lot in the process, but I think it's a good way and it works for us, so it is possible. And what we achieve doing this, well, as I told you before, more than 70% of commits right now are automated and with NSO. We have more than 20 company big services automated, and also um, some customer integrations which the customer's integration looks something like this. This is me, I think. Well, actually, 
the, the, the image, the real image is not this one, but this one. It's close, but we still have to work. This is not reality, but yeah, for some integration with customers, if everything works good, we are uh, proud to say that uh, within seconds, the customer can change uh, some values in the network for some services we sell, yeah. So we have time to code and perform more things. That's good. But if you don't want to do that, you can just lay back in the, in the seat. Don't recommend, by the way. And which is the team that allows everything? Well, 15 people. We are in, in the development methodology. And in, in the, our team, we have the full process from the plan and develop to the production to manage the machines where, where NSO or the service from the client are working. We also provide um, formation, documentation to the customers. We are also uh, solving operational incidents and, and that stuff related with the service. So yeah, our team is very flexible and have um, a lot of, you know, they are in the very parts of, of this um, methodology and, and develop. And what are the next challenges? Well, since we started from scratch, we are growing, we are learning, and the main focus is keep evolving from internal, make the team bigger, learn, and you need to adapt always in this uh, context. So uh, it's very important to keep uh, focusing on, on learn and grow. But also, we truly uh, like and, and believe in shared knowledge. So we try to help others. Everything we know, we share, and we try to make them, make other people enhance and automate their networks. And uh, well, uh, working towards this goal, we have partnered with steamed companies such as Telefonica in Spain, O2 in Germany, Vivo from Brazil. So well, we are proud to be close to, to these organizations and, and help them to evolve and enhance their networks. So that's our next challenges, guys. But we are not only NSO lovers that we are. We have a complete suite of tools that we work with. And for example, as I told you before, the elastic stats for some uh, monitoring and diagrams. We also use Alchemy, which is an internal um, tool for workflows and it allows us to call NSO services actions programmatically. So we uh, rely in, in every, a lot of tools, not only these ones, but we are also in this uh, topic. So, well, I think this is everything I have for you. Now you get a context of the company, of uh, the team, how we started, where we are. And now it's time for you to see how we make this uh, code high quality, reliable, and David is going to have fun with you and tell you how we do it this. So thank you and <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay, so I'm impressed because no one is taking his phone. I don't know if this is because Victor is a very interesting guy. Or maybe it is because it's 9 a.m. and you still have energy. I don't know, but good to know. So today, um, we're going to continue this presentation talking a little bit about testing. You know, um, first of all, I must say that we are used to give presentations, but not in such a serious forum. So. I have been asked to keep it as serious as possible, so I will try. But I can't promise, though. So let's see what happens. So for the testing part, um, you know, developing is also a smooth process. 
all, all, uh, everyone nowadays seems to be a developer, even people who hadn't studied anything about software is a developer nowadays, even economists are developers, so everyone knows to develop. But testing, mm, testing is a more complicated thing. Who of you loves testing? Put your hand up. Well, maybe four or three people. Um, who hates testing? <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people. Well, I'm sorry to be speaking about testing, but maybe that's the point. Let's see how to avoid breaking the network with a little bit of testing. So we're going to tell you a story. Afterwards, after hearing this story, maybe you would like to know how you can improve testing, based it in our experience. And finally, we'll tell you a use case that we found interesting at Telefonica in regarding testing. So first of, so first of all, we have a story that we have brought you. An important disclaimer in this story is that the content that you are going to see here actually never happened. If this happened, I will be fired. So it is good to know that this never happened. But you know, just to give a little bit of context, we have invented this story. It could have happened though, but fortunately it didn't. Well, once upon a time, there was a group of developers. Good news, developers, not testers. Great. And this story um, is based in a Friday at 12 p.m. before a production deployment inside NSO. So with this, you can imagine that this starts to be a horror story because to do a production deployment on a Friday at midday, what could go wrong, right? <laughs> a great idea. Well, uh, uh, this is 2017. And at that point, we were starting. And this was our testing team. It was the same as the developer team. So maybe 1% of time was testing, and 99% of time was developing. And this was the situation in 2017. And guys would sit down in a table, and they will start to test the uh, release. They will say, hey, guys, have you found any bugs in the code? Uh, no, I didn't find anything. I just read it, and that's all. Mm. At that point, we didn't have any automation tool for testing, so this was our testing pro process at the moment. But we were good to go. So after this meeting, which would last for five minutes at the most, we will be ready to deploy the software. Sounds familiar? Well, we will follow it all will have been at that point at some time, right? Um, our production environment at that point was looking pretty neat, all was working fine, nothing wrong with it. We had a bunch of stuff there interconnected, all was working fine. But then the production deployment was about to start. This was the systems engineer, it's Homer represented in the picture. He was about to deploy the software. So now it's Friday, 2 p.m., a couple of hours have passed. At that moment, we were wasting two hours in uploading and deployment pa packages in NSO, but you know. <laughs> so, but we made it. It was Friday, 2 p.m., and we were ready to go for the weekend. Another, our favorite picture. We like a lot to do this, as you can see. So there we were. Our production environment looked pretty nice, nothing wrong happened, but soon, boom, all went down. Friday, 2 p.m., and this was the status of our servers. <laughs> it all went down. So, <laughs> what's the point of this story? We need to improve our testing. That table of four guys talking wasn't working. Fixes and coffee were required. We were imagining going in a large Friday afternoon, having some beers, but no, we were going to fix the software at that point. So uh, our bosses, after that, required some serious preventive actions. The first thing that they required was bug-free software. They said, I don't want bugs in the code. I don't want my servers in fire. So 
What I need is bug-free software. The, the group of developers sat down and said, OK, let's remove all the bugs from our software. And we were left with a Hello World NSO package, <laughs> because that is bug-free software. So the lesson learned here, apart from the fact that we need to improve testing, is that bug-free software doesn't exist. In fact, there is a very good quote by Testing With that says, uh, software testing proves the existence of bugs, not their absence. Right? So now you know what to expect about this talk. So uh, our point here could be, uh, how do you believe that you could improve your testing if you're in the point that you are sitting in a table five minutes and then deploy to production? There are ways that you can try to improve your software. This is based in our experience. You have to adapt it to what you have in your company. But for us, there are three important things to keep up with testing. First of all, a very important thing is to have a culture change. We all hate testing, as we were saying at the beginning of the presentation, but if we want to improve it, we need to change our culture, at least begin to believe that testing is important, because if not, you may burn down your servers. The second thing are aut automation tools. Automation tools are key mm, to transform testing from a nightmare to a very pleasant experience. And third of all, you have time. This seems obvious, but we don't have time, so you have to get time. Let's dive in into these three points. For the culture change, I recommend taking a look at this general electric picture that tells you how to get the attention of an engineer or of a, de of a developer. The first thing that you can do to get the attention of a developer is to break something. If in your company you are allowed to break something, go ahead, break it, and then you'll have all the engineers saying, oh, what happened here? How can we avoid this in the future? So just break something, that's all. As a, if possible, something cheap. Don't break a very expensive machine because then you may be fired also. Um, the second way to grab an engineer's attention is to offer free coffee. If you offer free coffee, also, you will have a lot of engineer's time. And the third way, and the most powerful way to grab their attention is to pronounce the following phrase. There is got to be a better way to do this. If you say that, there's a lot of people that say, yeah, yeah, I have a good idea. You can sit down and get it. So for the culture part, maybe this helps you. For the automation tools, um, there are a bunch of automation tools out there. Um, we would recommend to get a couple of them and start doing something. You could start with Python if you have Python. Uh, NSO, mm, you can go ahead and use NetMiko, Cisco Jenny. Maybe the customer experience testing suite if you want something more elaborate. But you know, pick a couple of them and you're good to go. And for time, I would recommend using the engineering triangle. Uh, the concept here is very simple. You can only choose a couple of vertexes. So you have to decide whether your solution is fast and cheap, but then it won't be good. Or you can say that your solution wants to be fast and good, but it won't be cheap. So you get the point there, right? It's a good recommendation. And also speaking with your boss and trying to convince him to give you more time. OK. so. In our case, um, how did we solve the burning servers thing? Well, um, for the most part, with automation testing. But the first thing that we did at that point was to define the testing types that we needed. Um, there are lots of testing types, as, as you might know. But for us, this worked. Uh, first, uh, we got paper tests, then we got functional tests, in regression testing, integration, and user acceptance. We'll talk about them, don't worry. 
we divide the tests in two parts. The ones that you do with the customer itself and the ones that you do internally inside your, your team. It's important to not mix these two types of tests because if not, mm, then confusions will be made. So what are paper tests for us? Well, once you finish elaborating the software requirement specification with your customer, uh, we, have, we have implemented the paper tests. This is a very simple process in which the developer sits down with the customer and says, OK, for this input, what configuration are you expecting the device to have? So in the case of NSO, if you write down set service one, what are you expecting to configure in the device? And the customer itself will write in a piece of paper the answer the, for the input and the output. Just a very fast thing. And that's the reason why this is called paper test. And by doing this, you already are deleting a lot of misunderstand misunderstandings that could arise from the software specification thing. After this, uh, we have our internal tests. These are pretty common, but you have to make some of those. And in this part, there are functional tests that mm, you know assures that the software behaves as expected. Then you will have regression tests that make sure that the software update didn't break anything. And finally, you have integration tests that enables you to assure that the software keeps working with the other tools in your environment. And finally, once you have done the paper tests, when you have developed all the software and done the tests, you have the user acceptance tests. This could be different from your internal tests. They could be the same, but they could be different also. So it's important to notice here. These tests mm, are, the purpose of these tests is the user to validate the software functionality. So when you launch a new release, the customer should validate the software. For doing this validation thing, you can accord with the customer those tests, or it could be the customer itself who prepares them. It doesn't matter here. So we have talked about how to improve testing with this culture change, automation tools, and time. We have defined the type of tests that we have at Telefonica, at Telefonica Global Solutions. And now uh, we would like to speak about a use case that has been useful for us. It's a very simple thing that can be good to, to know here. And we are talking about the only in one NSO testing package. We have uh, developed a package which uh, enables you to um, do all the NSO tests inside NSO with one package. And you will be asking, why did you select it NSO among all the tools that you were listing before? Well, first of all, because NSO is a very good tool, that's important to note, but also to leverage our knowledge. Uh, we've been working with NSO for uh, quite a while now, and we are having knowledge here, so we selected it. Then also no external tools are required, just with NSO you got everything. And finally, you could run these packets in any environment. So if the customer wants to run some tests, you could install that package there, and that's it. You're good to go. Today, we will be showing a couple of functionalities of these packets, which implements um, functional tests and regression tests. There are more, but for this demo, we are good with these two. Which are the package features in this case? Well, first of all, um, what we're going to show today is valid for first stage testing, because what you're going to see is always based in the commit dry run NSO functionality, but not in the commit itself. We have that functionality, but we're not showing this today. And also, uh, one of the strong points of this package is that 
uh, it has a really fast execution. So I mean, um, if it's fast and it's cheap, it won't be good according to the engineering triangle, but you know. No, I'm just kidding, but the engineering triangle is a joke itself. <laughs> okay, so we have two running modes that we're showing today, the functional and the regression. You can execute them by separate if you want, both based in the commit dry run. This is the structure of the NSO all-in-one testing package. As you can see, it is a pretty standard NSO package. It has a source folder because it contains a young model implementing an NSO action. And it also has a Python directory containing all the required code to run the testing. Um, for the most part, you could use this as an NSO action, but you could also run it straightly with the Python console. So we have both options. This would be the package that you will install to do the testing. But also, the package that you want to test needs some modifications also. And here we have written down my NSO package. This is the package that you want to test. And this package has uh, um, a testing folder containing all the required information for the testing engine to run. For the first run mode that we're gonna show, it, this will be the regression tests, and these are the involved folders here. First of all, you have the configuration folder. This folder contains each NSO use case in XML format, so for each use case, one file. This is pretty standard. If you have ever done a load merge terminal in NSO, you can paste a bunch of XML code there, and then commit dry run or commit the test. Well, that's the input for our testing package. Then you have a golden folder. The golden folder contains the result, or the supposed result, of the NSO commit dry run execution for each use case. So our, our golden folder is our source of true for this testing. The content that is present at this golden folder is what the service is supposed to do when you perform a commit dry run towards a use case. And finally, we have a YAML file containing all the use cases that should be um, executed, but also this file contains a list of devices where the tests should be run, and in, in that list of devices, you could mm, insert also an initial configuration for the device. For some tests need, need it though. So this is the run mode for regression test strategy. Uh, and the first step, which is optional, is netscene device creation. The testing engine will do this. Afterwards, mm, the use case is loaded into NSO from within the config folder. Afterwards, a commit dry run is performed, and the result of that commit dry run is compared with the source of true that we have in the golden directory. And if both files match, then you're good to go. The test has passed. For the functional tests, uh, it's kind of the same thing, but the only difference is that the input to NSO is a device final template. In this case, uh, instead of having an XML containing its use case for NSO, what you have is a device native template containing the final configuration that should go into the device. For the other folders, it's just the same. The golden contains the commit dry run output, this the source of true, and the YAML, the devices, and the list of use cases. So our strategy he here for functional test is grab a device native template, do a load native inside the NSO, do a commit dry run, and then compare that result with the source of true that is present in the golden folder. 
right? So this will be our workflow. Um, this is triggered um, mainly by GitLab. We have this as a CI/CD environment. We'll have, we also have Jenkins, but for this case, GitLab is very convenient. So a developer will deploy code inside the testing branch. This will trigger a CI/CD pipeline. The CI/CD pipeline will call the NSO testing packets. Remember that it is implemented also as an action, so it, you could use the RESTConf API from NSO and just launch it. And then the Python code will, de will do its stuff, and you're good to go. You will get in GitLab all the results. We can do a fast demo here so you see how this works. But let me advise that after all these things, we're still having this. It doesn't matter the amount of testing that you perform, that yesterday it worked, and today it doesn't. Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> so let me hook up on my laptop here. And let's see if we can play a video. We were thinking about doing this demo live but in seven years, we haven't achieved to do a demo without errors. I don't know why. So we have learned that you should record this. <laughs> yeah. OK, so at this point, you should be seeing my screen. Um, I'm going to show the execution of these packets straight from my GitLab environment. So what we are seeing here is the aspect that uh, our access list NSO package has. As you can see, this is a quite normal NSO package. Uh, it has his Python code, source code, templates. But it also has a testing folder and a GitLab pipeline definition. This is the testing branch. So if we open the GitLab pipeline definition, what we see here, um, it's a, a couple of jobs calling this NSO package, a testing package. So it's just a script that calls the, the testing code and runs it. Um, for this demo, we have implemented here regression and functional testing in the same pipeline. And what happens when a developer releases code inside the testing branch? Well, the pipeline at that point runs. And when the pipeline runs, the our all-in-one NSO testing package will start to do its thing. In this case, we're running tests inside a Docker container. But the output of this execution contains all the commit dry run for all the packages. And at the end, what you're going to see there is, is the result for each individual use case. If the commit dry run matches the, the source of true, the golden folder, then you are good to go. That's for the regression tests. And for the, for the functional tests, it's kind of the same thing. You just compare the commit dry run of the native device file with the source of true. And that's it. And now uh, we can show you what happens if the pipeline fails. Well, in this case, um, here I was showing what happens if you modify a, f uh, um, a text file inside our source of true folder. Inside the golden directory, you would have the supposed commit dry run, the good commit dry run, the source of true. So now let's change uh, a line here and run the pipeline and see what happens. It will fail, obviously, but here we are running the pipeline, also in the testing branch. And what you will be seeing here is the regression test failing. If the first job fails, it all fails. We don't keep going because it doesn't make sense to keep going. If the regression fails, why would you have functional? It doesn't make sense for us. Okay, so here 
we can read test not passed, please review failing use cases. And we have the, the results there. It will tell you which test has passed and which one has failed. And at the bottom, a quick summary with the differences in the, with, for the use case in the commit driver. And by checking this, you can go to your code and say, OK, I have a bug and I need to solve it. And this is very quick. Uh, for us, it has been very useful, and it has solved us a lot of problems. It is a very simple thing. Um, if you don't want to code it, Cisco has a lot of solutions for doing exactly the same thing here. I would recommend talking to the customer experience team. And finally, uh, we would like to tell you, please take some action. On the first place, define the tests you need. Do you need functional tests? Do you need unit testing? Maybe you need regression testing? Make a list of the tests that you want to do. Design your testing workflow. Are you using GitLab? Are you using Python? I don't know. Just design it. it identify your available resources. What do you have? Do you have by hand NSO? Do you have um, Cisco Jenny? Whatever you use, just grab thing and code it. And that's it for today. So now, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer. <laughs> Interesting. So we've got quite a few questions, so let's dig into them. Um, so you said earlier that you were at 70% coverage for automation of all your commits. So what are the biggest challenges and, and what's the goal? I think I heard you say you want to get to 100%. Is, is that the goal or, you know, like 90% and you're happy and you can go have some beers? I mean, for now, the requirements from operational team mm -hmm. um, are filled. So it's good to have new services uh, in NSO and improve that that number, but uh, but it's not the main objective right now. Okay, so you're not driving to 100% just in the abstract here. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, since our operational team is good with that numbers, and we can manage the manual automated things. Okay, uh, but you know these last pieces of the 100%. Mm -hmm requires very much effort. So we want to reach that 100%, but we need more time. Okay. So you think okay. it's, it's getting harder as you're getting yes. closer to 100? Okay. Sure. I mean, that makes sense. I think that's what a lot of folks find out. Uh, so you talked about customer integration uh, early on. D do you have customers that are defining their own service model and doing that work up front and just saying, here's my service models. Can you go, go deliver them for me? Uh, well, about... Customers uh, defining models. You mean uh, what you mean exactly? When you talk, you know, like you had the example of the, it's, uh, the customer integration, where a customer asks you to do something, you're yeah. sitting with your head back on the chair, and magic happens. Yeah. Uh, are they bringing you? Do you have any customers that are bringing you service model? They, they already did the, did their service model definitions, and just want you to implement. Or are they giving you higher level requirements that then you then turn I into the actually service models? the the picture itself. Uh, speaks about they are having one service integrated and automated mm -hmm. in our network. For example, the internet uh, internet transit, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to change some parameter within the service. The service is already uh, implemented and okay. working, and they want to change one parameter. I don't know the bandwidth or uh, AS uh, exposed okay. to the network. So they r uh, ask for that change. And that modification is the one who is uh, automated. OK, so that makes sense. A uh, couple of questions just in terms of use of workflow. Are you using any kind of workflow tool in, you know, in any of this on top of NSO or as part of the process? Yeah, we're using a self-developed integration tool that we call Alchemy. And this is a workflow manager based in Django, I believe. And it's like the top part that we got towards in SO. And I think that's the only tool that Yeah, basically, it me. allows us to, like, we uh, call NSO from, from it, like an API, and we say, hey, uh, deploy this service or run this action. Is, that is how it works. OK. Uh, let's see. 
So talking, so, you know, mentioning Alchemy, you talked about this. It's been covered in in prior developer days. Uh, what's new and exciting in in terms of Alchemy from your perspective? Is there anything new functionality from that that you've found interesting or useful? You mean in terms of developing or or, or just in terms of capabilities of the of, of the tool? We're talking about the NSO or in general? Or Alchemy. You talk about Alchemy. Okay, yeah, it has its own API. Mm -hmm. um, our de NSO developers are trained also to develop workflows inside Alchemy. And it is based on Python, so the know how is quite similar to NSO. Okay. Okay, we are at time. We have a bunch of questions, so we will. Get, you know, we'll answer them offline and just populate them into into Slido. So, so thank you very much. That was a great session. A lot of good practical info. Thank you. Thank you. So while you're unplugging, so we're going to go to break. So please come back at 10:15, and uh, we'll pick up on some operations stuff. <laughs>